One of the most interesting people in the world was Jean Calme. She lived to 122 years old, and she's the longest lived person on record. Uh, she died a number of years ago, but she had uh, a great life. She was energetic, she had a great sense of humor. Um, one of the stories I heard is that uh, she was being interviewed by a French reporter, and he was young, and uh, he was there for her birthday, and he said, well, maybe I'll see you next year. And she said, I don't see why not, you look healthy to me. And this was her type of, her sense of humor. She said, I only have one wrinkle, and I'm actually sitting on it. And so she, she enjoyed life. She lived, uh, I think she smoked till in her 90s, and you get the idea. She lived a whole life, and it would be great if we could all live like that, in my view. Now, what's going on in, uh, in science these days with the, the revolution of uh, genomics and the ability to sequence thousands of people, one day millions, is that we can take people like her, and uh, there are many samples in freezers around the world taken from people who have lived a long time, and we can sequence these genomes and compare them with people who don't live a long time, typically, uh, and we can ask, what are the gene differences? What makes them special, if anything? We already know of a few genes that make so-called centenarian families live longer. Uh, these are families that typically live over 100, and their offspring as well. But what's going to come down the line very soon is with the ability to sequence all of these thousands of people who live long, is to find very quickly which are the genes that make them live longer and us live a normal lifespan. Now, that's going to be very exciting just to learn that, but then what do we do with that information? Now, one approach is to make medicines, uh, supplements, for example, that could make, for example, my, my pathways work just as well as Jean Calment, who lived to 122. Drug development takes a long time, of course, and it's not always successful. Now, I want to talk about I tell you about a new approach that I think is coming down the line that could be really an interesting way to make normal people like myself live uh, much longer, like the centenarian families, and that's genome engineering. Now this is technology that's rapidly changing. It's uh, going to allow a number of advances, not just at the bench to, to do experiments, but people are looking down the line at being able to engineer our own bodies, our own cells, take out the stem cells, alter them, put them back in, and this is a radical new approach to medicine and biology. Now, what's really interesting to think about is what if we could engineer the human germline? So the ger human germline is essentially uh, the descendants, uh, the cells that give rise to our descendants. Now, I'm excited about a number of years in the future where we'll be able to take out cells from people, the germ cells. Now we can already do that. We have the ability to take out germ cells from men and grow them in the dish. And more recently, just in, in the past few years, starting in the, the year 2012, the ability to take these stem cells out of women as well and grow eggs in the dish. In my lab at Harvard, we have the ability to do that. And these eggs that pop out in the cell culture we can make millions of these eggs. So what does that allow us to do? Well, actually, it allows us to change the human genome. And one of the things that I think is interesting to at least think about is whether we can correct genetic diseases in humans. So what we, I think we should be, be able to do in the near future, in a safe way, let's say a family has Huntington's disease, which is a dominant horrible neurodegenerative disorder. We will be able to take out the stem cells from the ovary of the woman and grow millions of these in the dish. We can then use new genome editing technology that allows us to very precisely change just single bases in the genome or whole stretches or even shrink down regions of DNA that are toxic that would allow the offspring of those parents to be healthy and get rid of genetic diseases out of the germline. And I think that that's coming. There will be a day when parents can go in, talk to the genetic counselor and say, we have these following problems that we do not want our children to have and we will fix them, okay? 
Now from there, it's just a short mental leap to being able to change any gene in your offspring. There are of course ethical considerations that we definitely should discuss. Today I'm, I'm going to focus mainly on what I think we might be able to achieve scientifically. I think scientifically what we will be able to do is to change genes that um, predispose humans to living a long healthy life and we can go in and change those genes and we can have um, human beings that are able to live um, much healthier and be resistant to common diseases as well. Now when we do that and even if we decided as, as a society to do that um, these are um, open questions. But what I think is important is that if we as a species one day want to make it to another planet to live on, and I'm of the belief that if we are going to survive long term as a species, we do need to do that, that this would be a, a, a way of making us able to live long enough to make it the thousands of years across the journey to another solar system. Now, one of the, the things that excites me about this technology is that because we can grow these stem cells many times, um, in fact, probably indefinitely, we can make many copies of them and isolate clones and sequence those clones to ensure that we haven't made some inadvertent mutation or change that could be deleterious and, and put back in the cells that are just what we want. And in that way, we can make sure that we have healthy offspring in just the right uh, in just the right way that the parents are, are looking to have. In terms of other safety and ethics, I think that that's going to be an important debate. Um, but one of the main things is safety, and that's something that we're really interested in, in ensuring, and we will not proceed until we, we know that it's safe. Now, one of the potential obstacles is that if we go and sequence these centenarians, uh, we find that there are hundreds of genes that we need to change to have a big effect on lifespan. Um, and we may find that that's true. We don't know for sure just yet. And if that's true, I think it's gonna be a real challenge changing hundreds of genes using the genome editing technology. But I'm hopeful that there will be just a few changes that will have a big impact on lifespan. We already know that there are changes uh, in certain families that predispose to longevity. So changing the insulin receptor, which is a receptor that controls the response to insulin, can have a dramatic effect on health and longevity in families. So we'll have to see. We'll, as a field, we'll sequence thousands of genomes of long-lived people. We'll see what the differences are. And then we'll be, have to do some research to decide how many and which genes to try to manipulate to produce healthy, long-lived uh, cells and eventually long-lived people that, uh, as I was saying, I think that that's necessary for us to, to eventually make it to other planets to survive. Well, let me give you an example of how this technology could be applied in the near term. Uh, let's say there's a family uh, where they have the BRCA1 mutation. This is the so-called breast cancer gene when mutated the women in the family, the offspring as well, tend to have a greater chance of having breast cancer. And this is a terrible affliction for families. Now one of the things we are trying to do here in my lab is to see if we can take out the stem cells from ovaries of women who have breast cancer and have the BRCA mutations. And we will grow those stem cells in the lab. These are called OSCs or ovarian stem cells. And we can grow thousands up to millions of these cells in the dish. And each one of those cells will carry the mutation from the donor. Now what we want to do is to use genome editing technologies. Uh, these are uh, new enzymes and RNA directed uh, proteins that are able to change just single bases in the genome of cells. And what we're working on is to change that BRCA mutation back into a wild type, a normal copy. And so far, things look really promising in that area. So let's say we're successful in repairing that mutation back to normal. Now we have a stem cell from a woman who had a mutation that's now fixed. What I think the future holds is that we should be able to find ways to mature those egg stem cells, those OSCs, into a fertilizable egg 
that you could deliver a sperm and do in vitro fertilization methods with. Those technologies are being developed right now in a number of labs around the world, uh, and we're uh, collaborating with those labs. Another approach is to take those stem cells from the dish that have been corrected and inject those back into the ovary of the woman so that they can mature within the body. Now we think that that's also going to work because there's already some early studies in mice um, and even some unpublished work in monkeys showing that that technology is actually, uh, does actually work. That putting those stem cells back in the ovary can produce offspring, viable offspring. So either the in vivo maturation or the in vitro maturation could be good approaches to taking these stem cells that have been repaired and producing viable offspring. And in that way, a family that is worried about passing on a terrible affliction, a genetic disease to their offspring, no longer has to worry. We can assure them that we can fix their children and generate them so that they will no longer pass on that disease to, to future generations. <laughs>